Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. It's my pleasure to be on. It's been 20 years since the devastating attack, uh, the September 11 attacks. And, you know, I can still remember the exact moment when I heard the news, right? And, and I feel like it has really changed the world. Dr. Shabir, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I too can remember vividly the uh, events of that uh, morning, like where I was, I was busy absorbed in my, in my work. And then your mom uh, came down to, to me, to me uh, as I was in the basement, and she said, you know, there's been an attack in, in America. Mm -hmm. And uh, at first I didn't uh, give much attention to it. Uh, and then she said, they think Muslims did it. And, you know, I, I suddenly woke up to the reality that uh, this is going to, you know, have a devastating impact on Muslims uh, to begin with. Of course, uh, you know, we all see things from our own perspectives. On, and the wider perspective, we care for every life lost and uh, we don't want anybody to be attacked anywhere. Uh, but we, we tend as human beings to pay attention to the things that hit home to us. And, mm -hmm. and when your mom said that, you know, it's, they think Muslims did it, uh, I, I realized that this is going to, you know, change things in a dramatic way, at least for, for Muslims. Mm -hmm. I remember it was my first year, first day of university and the professor at Khan Hall, a 1,500-seat um, room, played uh, CNN. Uh, for the first one and a half hours. So we were just watching and it was, you know, you, f you felt a sense of embarrassment because it was reported that it was a Muslim, w Muslims were behind it. Uh, so that was really embarrassing. Um, and you felt very singled out, like everybody was, was staring at you, you know. And then when, when you saw the, when, when we saw the images of people jumping off buildings, right, to try and save themselves, um, that was really devastating to watch as well. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, looking back at it, uh, we, we, we have to come, come away from it with, with lessons. We have mm -hmm. to think about the global picture, uh, you know, what leads up to an incident like this, how to prevent it in the future, and, uh, and what do we learn from it all in, in retrospect. We know that immediately after uh, the United States president uh, launched the war on terror, so they were in Afghanistan less than a month after the attack. Uh -huh. um, and then, you know, that just, they just pulled out, you know, a, a little recently, while ago. Yes. So it was 20 years exactly. that the United States has been in Afghanistan. Uh -huh. um, and then in, in 2003, they invaded Iraq uh -huh. on false pretenses, right? Uh, weapons uh -huh. of mass destruction and connections to Al-Qaeda. Uh -huh. um, so this war on terror has been pretty, you know, widespread. That's right. And it's left a, a devastating impact. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, on on the American economy, you know, I don't know, billions, hundreds of billions of dollars have been have been spent on this, um, you know, protracted war on terror, and uh, in in the wars that then ensued in, in Afghanistan and uh, in in Iraq, and um, uh, they, you know, on the other side, um, millions of lives have been lost, mm -hmm. and and um, many have been displaced. People have been displaced. Uh, in, in other and countries. countries have been yeah. destroyed, right? Exactly, exactly. So probably I should have said hundreds of thousands of, of lives have been have been lost, mm -hmm. and uh, and millions of people have been displaced. So how many? You know, the analysts are are still working that out, but uh, you know we can see the devastating on uh, devastation on the ground. And uh, while you know uh, the we we can look back at the causes and think about you know why like uh, there, there was a famous line from a lady who. You know, um, in, in looking at that devastation, she said, why do they hate us? Mm -hmm. and, and this was, you know, plastered uh, as, uh, you know, as headlines in, in some newspapers. So that, that is a question that still, you know, should ring through to, to people. Like, uh, thinking about it, like, why, why would anyone plan to commit suicide while attacking America. Like, why would, they, why would they feel so strongly about this? One might say, okay, because of their distorted religious views. That could be one um, aspect of it. But then the other side of it, many analysts uh, point to uh, the hegemony of America, you know, in the 50 years leading up to that um, in, in, in other countries. Uh, so, you know, the protest of bin Laden and some others is that, uh, you know, America has no uh, right to meddle in the affairs of the Middle East. Uh, so, you know, it has to be seen from different perspectives. You know, world politics is very complicated. I, I speak as, you know, interpreter of religion. I'm not an expert in politics. You are. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
So I can, I can only have some sense of what people are discussing and, and to uh, you know, encourage people to look at all of the aspects. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, as a religious interpreter, I'll be looking uh, more closely, and I have been looking very closely at uh, the Quran, at the reported sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I look at how these uh, have been misused and maybe to a certain extent continue to be misused by people who want to um, promote a, a violent um, a program of, of Islamic change or revival or you know how how they motivate the the Muslim youth with uh, certain verses of the Quran and and Hadith. Uh, this has been my forte, and mm -hmm. of course, over the last couple of decades, I've spoken about this again and again, and I will continue to do so. Uh, on the other hand, those who are in politics will have to look at the broader picture and think about uh, the way in which uh, America is involved in in other countries. But from my humble perspective, I don't see that much has changed in that regard. You know, for, for example, if we think about uh, the, the move of, of the American embassy uh, to um, that, that portion of land which is uh, being disputed. So uh, this, this does not show much consideration for uh, the point of view of Muslims uh, and, and Arabs. And, um, uh, that that does not seem to be, you know, it seems that a, a certain lesson has been lost from the whole 9-11 uh, uh, scenario. Mm -hmm. And and it may be, it may be that certain, um, you know, powers that be feel themselves to be so powerful that they can go ahead, continue to do whatever they want and not worry about consequences. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is precisely the... the um, the point that bin Laden and his followers wanted to drive home to America. Don't think that your policies abroad will not come back to haunt you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and don't think yourself to be so powerful and uh, impregnable. Uh, you, you are vulnerable like everybody else. And, and with, you know, it's, uh, what, what was so shocking to many people is that uh, with all of America's defenses, uh, you know, being one of the uh, probably the, the greatest superpower of its time, um, it, it still was open to such an attack where um, people with the simple weapons of their own bodies uh, can can go launch an attack mm -hmm. and 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 be successful at this in in such a coordinated manner. Mm -hmm. um, we know that even domestically, soon after the September 11 attacks, um, the the U.S took on unprecedented powers militarily um, in terms of intelligence uh, and security and law enforcement. Um, we'd never seen this, this sort of power before. And it affected all aspects of people's lives, um, especially Muslims' lives. Um, but you can even think about the airport, for example. Um, you know, it, it was a much more straightforward process to go to the airport and, and get on a plane than it is now, right? Mm -hmm. Even 20 years later. Yes. And of course, they, they, they could not uh, say that we're singling out Muslims alone for this kind of uh, heightened scrutiny. And, and that meant that, uh, you know, our um, uh, Canadian and American uh, friends uh, had to go through some of that scrutiny as well. But of course, mostly it fell, fell on Muslims. Mm -hmm. uh, and I noticed it myself because I would be random. I'd be selected at random so many times that I know after a while it's not random anymore. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I would uh, look at the reactions of, uh, of people around me. And, and many people were embarrassed So when I'm called out, like we're there sitting in the, on the hallway for our flight, suddenly there is a call from me. Like, why me? And and then I'm taken away and you know put through scrutiny. My bag is open, searched, everything tumbled therein, and then eventually I come back. So when I come back, you know, the, the I can see the awkwardness and the embarrassment uh, among people, mm -hmm. uh, and and perhaps even the the uncertainty of some people. Like you know, um, I went into a, an, a, a, an aircraft once, and I can hear a, a, um, a woman and, and and her husband talking to each other, and uh, you know, one of them said, "I don't remember which one. Uh, do you want to fly with him?" Mm. And uh, I on the same flight uh, when I. Um, you know, I sat in my seat. Uh, the lady ahead of me um, was visibly uncomfortable, like she was agitated. And eventually she could bear it no more. She turned around and, and, and said to me, you're not planning to go to heaven, are you? <laughs> and I said to her, I, as a matter of fact, I am, but, but just not today. Um, in retrospect, I shouldn't have said even that because, you know, if my words could have were gotten reported, into trouble yeah, for just they, that, yeah. They, yeah, just that. 
so uh, you know it shows the the situation in which we are the you know the islamophobia that rose out of that has not died down and we have seen it in canada in incidents where muslims were were attacked uh, most recently in london ontario uh, where four people were were hit by a um, by a truck and um, you know obviously because they they were, they were muslims mm -hmm. so uh, we, we we have to step back from all of this and, and learn lessons from it, and um, and we have to carry on. But in the end, we know that uh, truth and justice and uh, freedom uh, will prevail. Uh, we just have to keep working at that. And um, it's 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 so sad that that it takes a moment like this in our history uh, to remind us of things which are important, and um, it we, we shouldn't lose the lessons. From, from an event like that, terrible as it is. Thank you for those insights, Dr. Shabir. And 20, 20 years later, let us really think about what went on and, and, as you said, learn those lessons. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, click like and subscribe. And please donate to support our work at Quranspeaks.com.